Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. So this is a little impromptu. Sometimes when I ask Cindy a question, um, you know, I get answers that go way beyond um, what I asked. And even uh, she it even connects to certain beings and then they want to share uh, their story with us so we can share their story with the world. Um, so what I have here are some photos of King David. Well, pictures and depictions of what they think King David is. As I've said before to you guys, what, what we have going on is revisionist history. Revisionist history in the biggest sense that you can imagine. Everything is completely distorted, twisted, and, and it's twisted so badly um, like a mega pretzel so that the system thinks there's no way you're going to be able to decipher the real reality. Yet at the same time, what we have on going right now is an ascension process that's awakening in, in the masses, in many people again, especially who are trying to cultivate a, a spiritual practice, a mind-body-breath practice, and dedicate time to meditation uh, and going deeper. And we are going to be able to actually connect with other beings. The reality is, it doesn't matter if somebody's alive or dead it, to us in the 3D. We can connect with them. You really can connect with them. You'll be able to do this in other ages. It makes it almost impossible to truly lie and get away with it when people have activated light bodies, working pineal glands here in the physical, and also when, when we are in the silver and the golden ages, that type of distortion is, is, is not really able to happen. What the system has done is the system has intertwined historical figures and rewritten their who they are, rewritten uh, what they were all about, and made it so that these figures will conform to the reality that they want to give the masses, knowing that the masses, because the masses are, are not going to have, in a dark age, access to truth. Um, they're going to have to go through the written word and, again, recognize that even the Bible itself wasn't in the hand, uh, hands of the masses for most of the time of its existence. It was just in the hands of the elite who... Uh, basically interpreted it and, and spoke it to the masses. And the masses just had to go on what they heard from the mouths of, of the priests, again, the Pope, the, um, the royalty, so to speak, the controlling class. And, and it's only in like the last 500 years, not even, that we've actually been able to look at copies ourselves. But the whole of it is a distortion. It's all a distortion, you know, in the first place. So I was asking about King Solomon, and we got some really interesting information about Solomon and the real reality behind Solomon. But then surprisingly, uh, King David popped up. Now, when you look at it, it there's a lot of um, there, there's a lot of weight given to King David as those that are familiar with the biblical stories my purpose is not to go over the biblical stories um, kind of assuming that so, that most people are going to have basic knowledge but you could certainly get your hands on a bible if you want to it's the most publicized book out there of all time for a reason because again it is the control system narrative of our history from a, a religious standpoint King David is, is not, in reality, the person that the Bible portrays him to be, not even at all. Uh, in fact, the, the, there really was a King David, uh, and it's based on, believe it or not, a person of gigantic proportions. <laughs> um, uh, when, when Mike asked me about King David... Um, 
I, I, I looked at him and I asked to see King David and this is a very, very large man and he showed himself to me uh, with, with his crown and his golden crown and is a very large stature. He was a giant. Now he's showing me how much bigger he was than uh, those that are in his shoes right now. And he is, he, his energy, when I read into his energy, it's mostly what I see is, the, I see the golden crown. I see the white, he's wearing white and I see like either golden or, or a little bit of yellow in his energy field. Um, I, you know, when I feel into it, he's not a bad person. He's, he's not, he's not a meanie head. He's not anyone who is going to bring harm. In fact, his energy has, um, uh, to me has a very strong, uh, moral nature to it. And he's simply awaiting to step back into his shoes. And, uh, the, the word usurped, uh, was brought up and that's very much what happened. So those, um, beings or controllers are stepping into his shoes and claiming his story as a control mechanism. He's quite aware of this, but he's standing big and he's standing back and he's allowing these lessons to be learned. And when it is time, he will reclaim, uh, who who he once was and he will make himself known once again uh it seems like he's an understanding that humanity has a lot to learn and it's not his place to teach them and uh, we are working through this learning process now um so yeah that's that's what i got with king david i thought it was interesting his energy is clean his energy is strong his intentions felt good and I, I, I usually get scared when I get this information because I know some people might be very, very angry about it, but I'm giving you what I get. I'm giving you the information that comes to me from another realm. Yeah, as you see, you know, again, we don't trust Wikipedia, but you know, they're just, this is all information you can find from multiple sources. And what does it say? It says, you know, the historicity, uh, of David as an individual has been extensively challenged. Little detail that's concrete and undisputed. Debates persist over a lot of controversial issues, etc. When he reigned, geographical boundaries of the kingdom. So what we get is uh, what she's picking up is in reality, um, no, it, you know, the real King David is not necessarily the king of Israel. Uh, again, they usurp things and this is what they do uh with certain personas i've i've found this in so many um places especially even names of gods or what we perceive to be gods which in reality um typically are extraterrestrial uh, sometimes they're even more of a force of nature as when we've looked at the what is l you know l that El is a Canaanite storm god, will we'll be told. And when Cindy remote views El, she sees literally a cloud, like a consciousness in a cloud. I do. I see a cloud of uh, energy, and this energy can be accessed. It can be tapped. It can be utilized. It's almost something you could touch almost you know but when when i say a cloud i mean it looks literally like a cloud maybe a little bit more white and it's full of of information and it's full of uh, intent and, and it's something that people can tap into uh we're not really given this information here in this realm at least we are not those who are you know the controllers consider us peasants we're not taught about this stuff but it, it's definitely there and we have the ability to reach into it and to match our vibration and utilize that energy for for our own making for our own world to create yeah, as, as this says, um, you know, El is thought to be uh, a storm god, a sky god. There's a reason for it because, you know, again, you could look at this as a being that's kind of elemental in nature. I would say so, yeah. Yeah, this, this feels like an elemental being. Now, 
there were uh, gods, quote unquote, of mountains, of rivers, lakes, streams, oceans. You know, when you really look at that, then you are talking about more uh, elemental beings, which there are. There are very small elemental beings that keep your body going. You wouldn't be alive without these elemental beings. No, we, we need them. I mean, we w can work with them in other ages. It's just common to work with them. Uh, there's certain ways to connect with them. And if your energy is clean and if you're already connected to the earth and you're already using the earth for most of what you do, the your ability to reach them and your ability for them to help you is stronger and uh you're, you're more apt to get help and you're more apt to have um, information from these beings and have them be able to reach into your life and give you information. I always tell people, I talk to people when we do a session, uh, if they've lost something, they really need to get in touch with their finders. And, and your finders are a little group of beings that help you when you lose stuff. If you lose something, um, they and you ask, hey, finders, I need some help. They might put little flashes of information in your mind and help you find that thing. I mean, for me, they work always very, very well, but you have to be in touch. You know, you have to be in touch with, with the earth. You have to be grounded. You have to be um, quiet in your soul so you can see them and hear them. Yes, absolutely. So when you look at this, in the, and this again, um, is just mainstream it's right there a lot of people again that really push the fundamentalist side of things they haven't even done begun to do the basic studying yeah, the basic theological studies uh we do know for a fact when you look to you know what what do the scholars say well scholars propose that el was the original god of israel later replaced or merged with yahweh Yahweh's revisionist, the, the God of the Israelites. Um, you know, again, there's the Elohist texts. There's the Yahweh's texts. You know, this is all basic 101 um, early stuff that you would learn if you were going to start to study theology. Um, you see how this merger happens. Uh, a, a good example is Amun, the, the hidden God. And, you know, again, Amen comes from Amun. Uh, as it was an alternative uh, spelling and pronunciation of the same uh, hidden deity and being merged with Ra, the sun god. You see this in Egypt. Uh, so, you know, it, it's people will say, oh, El Elyon, El you know, God most high. You know, again, there's El Shaddai, God almighty. There's all these different, you know, names because originally these were... <laughs> Uh, utilized to denote different beings. You have to recognize when we go back to the earliest versions of the Genesis account, they're all different names. These are all different names. You know, you'll have Marduk and Enlil and Enki, Ningashira. You'll have all these different cast of characters with different names as they were trying to create um, a monotheistic version of things and hide the fact uh, that, you know, what we were talking about was really uh, an extraterrestrial invasion of sorts of the planet. This is what they started to do um, in the transition period. And they actually did, of course, um, usurp different positions. We've seen this, and we see this even in in royalty in in past ages where you know uh, one king will conquer another's lands and when you listen to the titles of kings or of different uh royalty you know they'll start listing duke of this and that and you know earl of that and yeah 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 you know again they have a million different titles it's all about inflating the ego but when they conquer a people, they'll take on the titles of that ruler, too. And this is exactly what the system does. You know, so the Yahweh cult, which is a cult, um, you know, it, it's all a cult. <laughs> the whole thing is a cult. And yet they, you know, call everything else a cult. You know, again, this is all usurping uh, the natural order. And, uh, and I think it's as clear as can be when you start to look at 
the comparative mythologies of the Aesir and the Vanir. The Vanir are, are beings that are of a more natural nature, an elemental nature. Um, the old system that was in place, so to speak, and then, you know, the Aesir come in and they take it over. And so if we wanted to equate them, we would equate uh, L more with the Vanir or we could equate L more with the uh, Titans, you know, if we want to go to the Greek uh, root of things and Yahweh with the, um, you know, the, the gods and, you know, the Yahweh with the Aesir. It, it's all very clear when you, you take a step back and, and are not, you know, embrace embraced by all the dogma. You step away from the dogma. Uh, you know, it's it's just so obvious. And it was even again covered uh, by the historians of that time. And it's fascinating because you know, there's a couple other videos w that are in my head or that we're going to cover. But when you when you look at this this is what they do they take on the titles and characteristics this is why you have poseidon with the trident of uh shiva you know because again shiva is older than poseidon you know again they're they're rewriting the history as we go and they're trying to make it confusing and and they do do that because i see um people that do great work uh, still saying, you know, that, that Enki is, is Poseidon, which is Shiva. Well, this is what the system wants you to think. But no, they're, they're very, very different. They're different energies. And, and Cindy could, you know, attest to that fact that they, they couldn't be any closer. They're all very different energies. I mean, the, the thing is, is, is when you channel information, you get these very distinct feelings. I mean, look at our pets, for example. Maybe someone has five dogs, but you know uh, with each individual dog, they all have a, a very individual way about them. They all have their own little tendencies. They all have their own vibration. You can kind of figure what one dog will do as opposed to what another dog will do. And that's just how this world is. So a lot... There is a lot of usurping from uh, different beings from uh, an age like a silver age and a gold age. And it's like when we move down into the Kali Yuga, uh, beings want to hold on to that, that title. They want to hold on to that essence and they want to say, well, this being, I'm, I'm going to just take over the name and the reputation of this being and it's not fair. But that's exactly what they do. Think about this as, you know, it's, given that the Israelites are the ones that exterminated the giants through, you know, from Canaan, and you'll have people that will justify um, the, the extermination of the Canaanites by saying, well, they were all, you know, sons and daughters of the fallen angels. This is what the system does. We watch what's happening today in Gaza. It's the same thing. It's the same system doing what it's doing. Uh, when you look to King David, isn't it hilarious that the real King David would turn out to be a giant? Uh, actually, one of those that was persecuted by the system, but then the system says uh, that King David was the king of the system. <laughs> this is exactly uh, how they do things. Now, people could tap into the energy of David, and I think, again, people tap into the energy of of the real Yeshua Jesus and they feel into it and they sense there's something very concrete there's something very real and something very very positive there and this is what the system understands that that some people will feel into that so they utilize a being uh, that was perhaps fighting the very system that ends up uh, using the name of that being in a way that they can benefit from it because we are multi-dimensional beings the controllers understand that we have that sense we have that sense to reach out and feel if an entity is real if it really did exist so it is important for them to have a character that really 
did exist and did walk the earth and w was very real because we have that ability. And I, I, I see through the controllers, it's like they know, they, they know where they can get away with lies and they know where they can get away with, you know, just a little bit of a, a little bit of a um, misdirection. And, and that's what they do. Yeah, they're, they're very, very good at misdirection. So um, I just wanted to share this with you guys. Now, King Solomon is interesting because, again, when we look to King Solomon and you look at a, a magical uh, tile out there, Solomon literally is sun and moon. You know, So it's depicting yin and yang in so many ways. Now, he's given as the king, uh, King David's uh, child, but it's not the case. They're, they're not related. Um, king Solomon really is at the root of a lot of the Masonic initiations. Uh, Hiram Abiff, that whole thing, we'll get into that in future videos. And we have touched on it in, in past videos. Sun and moon and magic. It's interesting, too, that there's grimoires attributed uh, to Solomon as well as things like the Book of Wisdom, the Wisdom of Solomon. What you have to understand is, and I know a lot of you guys understand, that much of the writings are done um, in a, in a pseudepigraphal manner, meaning that they're attributed to somebody, but they're not actually written by them. And, and it's the same thing with the Gospels. Like, Mark didn't write the Gospel of Mark. Matthew didn't write the Gospel of Matthew. It go, you know, same thing with John. And this, this is part of the reality that the, those that study these things understand right off the bat. You know, they're not really written by them. They're, they're written way past <laughs> the lifetimes of these people uh, in most cases. And, and you know, again, uh, it's attributed to the actual disciples that they were, for the most part, completely illiterate and couldn't write, let alone write in a different language than they spoke. So, you know, this is the type of thing that unless you start going deep, and you're just somebody that has blind faith. Well, faith, it can be very blind and it can lead you straight off a cliff or into pushing other people off a cliff, you know, in the name of that faith. And this is exactly why we uh, really, really keep bringing this up. Um, so there's a lot of things attributed to Solomon. Now, Solomon is a very, very interesting character. And yeah, I would say that the more I think about it, the more Solomon is probably a, a lot like Mithras because what we found out with Mithras um, who is another being there is the Mithraic mysteries there's myth Mithraism uh, Mithraism um, it, it was another cult a Roman mystery religion but you'll find that not just in Rome Mithras or Mitras was was also known uh, in in Persia, also known in India, this and attributed as a sun god, etc., etc. Um, you know, a, a dying resurrection god like Dionysus, and and you could go into it. The reality was it was an extraterrestrial, and in the Bronze Age, and so with the Bronze Age, you had a lot of different extraterrestrials interacting. Um, with humans and King Solomon or what we attribute uh, Solomon to be uh, is, is as the son of David again <laughs> there you go sun sun and moon Solomon sun and moon uh, a being yeah you know, that that's a revisionist history um, you know also Solomon you have the different accounts now Josephus is an interesting character um, as you know, I saw a comment that was t saying to me, you know, look into Ralph Ellis. And, and I had years ago, but I hadn't looked at anything of Ralph Ellis's in maybe like five years. Um, so, you know, here you go. You, you have Josephus or Josephus uh, account of Solomon. The, the reality is, again, when you look at Josephus, he, and, and we'll do a full video on him, uh, because, you know, he is perhaps the key to, to many uh, of things that we have questions about. 
He attributes 3,000 books of Proverbs and 1,005 books of Odes to Solomon. You know, Solomon was an extraterrestrial. And, you know, this is another being that was here on Earth and having fun, uh, having a lot of fun. And sometimes at the expense of humans, his, his energy is not as strong as David's. Uh, this is somebody that is is more of a, an opportunist, let's say, and Cindy's nodding her head. He is. He is an opportunist coming here to Earth to realize that his abilities um, and what he knows and how he works with the, with the ether, um, being able to really dazzle a lot of humans, and he enjoyed this. He enjoyed this, and he made his whole world around it, being able to dazzle humans and other other beings, um, making himself to be, you know, very uh, having people just look look at him in awe. And and for him, this was entertainment. Now, was he bad? You know, I mean that I don't know. I don't know. I don't know that he did really horrible things besides manipulate people. What did he manipulate them to do? I don't know. I don't really want to look. But he definitely did use his abilities to make himself be more than what he was because uh from his very own planet he he was nothing unusual and he wanted to be something special he wanted to be something different he realized when he came to earth he could definitely do that absolutely so according to the hebrew holy book of kings book of chronicles and the and the quran the great king solomon also known as suleiman suleiman and jedediah was the son of the famous king david of the Israelites, who reigned in the land of Canaan, with Jerusalem as its capital, as the third king of the Israelites, uh, from 970 to 931 BC. This is again the revisionist history. Um, the reality is they they weren't um, any sort of blood relation, uh, from what we get. And you know this was new to me that King David was actually a giant. And I do trust Cindy's info. I mean her ability to pick up is insane. Uh, and the hundreds, if not thousands, of people we've worked with uh, can verify her abilities because, you know, she's connected with loved ones that have passed on uh, new, just so many countless times and has known things, been able to relay information again that wouldn't be known unless it was from somebody that had passed on. But the reality is, again, we're all in this ocean. Of consciousness so we can connect to other beings you know you can if you are putting out there to connect with Yeshua he's gonna hear you but you might not be able to hear him answering you back and you know this is the reality that the system knows they also know again this is why we have their dates because they know about what point in time they won't be able to pull the wool over humanity anymore now, the thing with Solomon and magic is, you know, there's grimoires, uh, you know, that, that get into, uh, you know, demonology as well as as other uh, types of manipulation of realities. So, absolutely, Solomon, sun and moon is, is somebody uh, that would pull from the light or the dark, whatever was necessary, um, you know, to serve the purpose. Mm-hmm. What I also picked up is a lot of these processes, he, he, he just, he kind of made them up. He just, he knew what he could do. He wanted to keep it a secret and this was his front. So he would put a lot of things on paper and say, well, this is what I do and this is how you can do it too. And uh, that wasn't necessarily true. As you see, things like getting into planetary spirits, then we could get into the magic of john d court astrologer you know thinking he's talking to the anakian uh spirits and who is he talking to he's talking to the draco and the greys of course you know this this is you know again where that that leads to but at the same time yes there there is some knowledge in here um but again pre tread lightly and and recognize what you're doing i would never knowingly call on anything dark you know 72 demonic uh groups <laughs> known as jinns or genies they're very real absolutely you know we actually got a photo of a jinn 
uh, that we've shared with you guys that we saw in, in Mississippi that ended up uh, killing a bunch of uh, goats and, and lambs. Uh, very sad situation. These, these beings are very, very real. And, you know, again, this, this should kind of give people clues when they're talking about these demonic uh, hierarchical groups. Yeah, it, I mean, it's something that if that that's the thing, awareness, awareness is what keeps you safe. So uh, having an understanding of how powerful your intention is going into anything like this, I, I think is rule number one is know, know what you can do and um, just don't go beyond that until you're ready and you have a good understanding of, of what you are doing. Absolutely. So there's so much more than meets the eye, and we just wanted to share this with you guys uh, to give you some info that we just picked up this morning as I asked her a simple question, and we got like a lot of really cool information. Uh, again, put down in your in your comments what you want to hear more of, um, and we'll we'll cover that, and we'll see what we can do to uncover more of these mysteries. Thank you again for your support on Patreon. We couldn't do it without your guys' support over there. As always, much love, source bless, and namaste. Namaste.